Hi guys, this is an intro into the epoxy granite filling of the Industrial Hobbies Mill. I have a few still frames from when I used the PM940 to drill and tap all the holes. There's like 50 holes. There's uh, M6, M8, M10, and uh, 5 8 holes. Most had to be tapped by hand, and uh, this will be a fun project. We'll get into it right now. Hi guys, this is a look at the industrial hobbies. People used to call this the 12Z mill. I'm doing an epoxy granite fill on it, and I figure I would show everybody what the start is here. Now this mill is a RF45 clone, and it's basically, if you want to look at the y-axis here, it's about two inches longer than a standard RF45, and it's about almost two inches shorter than the PM940. So it's a heavy casting. Um, they don't sell these anymore here in the States. Um, Industrial Hobbies became Charter Oak Mills, and uh, they've been out of business now for like 10 years, but I bought two of them when I bought this one. so. I make a lot of my parts on my other IH mill. This one's actually brand new, even though it doesn't look new. So um, what we've done is I'm going to do epoxy granite fill. And just so you can see in here, there is a bunch of pieces of rebar. And in this dimension here, I have almost two inches of thickness. So I went with the, this is a one inch rebar. And this one I actually messed up here. Um, so it has five H threads on all these. I think most of these are actually tightened up. All together, I have 49 different pieces of rebar and screws that are stuck in here, 49 holes. And right now, now this casting weighs 180 pounds. And I'm gonna flip it over here in a bit because what I'm doing today is one of the final things before I start doing the uh, epoxy fill, which is I gotta uh, plug off the Y axis here. I got a piece of tubing and then I gotta plug off the Z so the epoxy granite doesn't go through there. So um, this one I'm gonna um, and I actually changed my plans on this one initially. I actually will set this down for a second. My initial plan, let me see if I can see this here, was I have this inch and a quarter rebar, and I was going to cast this in concrete and not epoxy granite. And my initial idea was to run all of these here and make a full size stand out of concrete. And that way there just wouldn't be a stand on it, which is fine, except I was worried about the concrete shrinking too much and actually creating a lot of stress on the cast iron and causing it to crack. Plus I actually want to do full chip evacuation and a chip pan. And it really just, I had to do a split chip pan in order to get around it because I would have one on one side and one on the other. And so, um, and then also just to make things worse, even though this is an inch and a quarter rebar and I have uh, my throat on my lathe is an inch and a quarter. Um, the bumps are just tall enough on this part between these two parts here where they wouldn't fit into my lathe, um, which basically sucked weighing, which is horrible. So I couldn't turn the uh, threads on the end of my lathe like I did with all the other ones. So, um, what I'm going to do with this piece now, it's going to actually, I've got a few of these extra. I'm going to cut a hole and that one's going to go through the middle there. And I'll put one more here. Oh, wait, it's not going to go here, but anyhow. Um, when I'm done, there'll be four pegs for the, for the mounting. I'm not going to do the uh, two and a half foot high concrete idea. We're doing epoxy granite. I got all the glue and I got a bunch of different kinds of rocks. I'll cover that more maybe a little later. When we start doing that. Um, I'm assuming now we got 180 pounds for the casting. That's not counting the steel. We have uh, three eighths 
by five inch steel here and here. These are gonna go here and I'll weld them onto this plate, which is a half inch by six. And this is all internal, so you won't see any of it because the side of the mold will be here. So everything internal, you don't see any of it, so looks don't matter. And then there's gonna be two more on these middle pieces, which will be the exact same idea there. That's a five inch by three eighths. And then I'm gonna use one piece of this angle, which is five inch angle. And they won't be sitting against the chassis. I'm gonna raise them up just slightly. And the only reason I'm using this is because it will stick a little bit better. And all of this will stop this area from flexing in this dimension, which is the highest stress where the uh, column is. So uh, with the steel, we'll weld all these in place. There'll be a bunch of little welds. And with the steel in here, it probably weighs, you know, 250 right now. And then with the concrete, I'm gonna assume, this, this one has to be shortened. And this is how I did all of them. Um, turn them on the lathe. And it was a bit of a challenge on the lathe because it made it not quite as easy. Because the outside surface is not really round, you can turn them down and then you gotta to switch to your tapping tool, put your tap on there. And I actually had to flip the tap over so you can get them close. However, if you took them loose and put them back in, which would really be the easy way to do it, turn all them down first and then tap them all. But if you took them loose and put them back in the chuck, they were nowhere near round because they don't relocate in the same place. So I had to do each one individually. And uh, so we got a bunch of those. Anyhow, so the top of the, or the bottom of the mill will be at this height, plus uh, like a half an inch. And so it'll all be epoxy, and the only thing that's gonna stick out is gonna be four of these, which will be your um, mounting surface to mount the mill. And it should be around 600 pounds when it's done. So uh, I'm gonna flip it over. I'll show you guys the top of the mill here. And uh, I got some more trimming to do, but this is almost ready to go. Um, all of the, uh, like this uh, centerpiece here, will be up just a little bit and most of these rods will be underneath. I couldn't do more of the angle. I wanted to do more of the angle but it wasn't going to leave me room to pack in the rocks. So and then I got a, a tight spot on the outsides here because there's just not that much room and the same on this dimension here. And so this the outside perimeter will be mostly just fine sand mixed with the epoxy. And then the center area will use, uh, I got a lot of the larger rocks and stuff and they'll pack in there easier. So that's it, I'm gonna flip it over and that'll take a while. So now we have a little bit of an overview of the casting without all the uh, rebar pieces in here. And a few weird things have happened over time. When I first put this whole pattern in, like I said before, I was planning on uh, using a concrete base and there was gonna be, these rods were all gonna be 24 inches long, basically into a base that is tall, you know, real tall. So the, whether or not they were in line didn't matter because there was nothing to reference to. I wasn't planning on putting the cross steel pieces in. But I changed the design, so now the cross steel pieces, these holes are not all perfectly straight. And I gotta like monkey with them to get those straight. And then just a few weird things on the casting. The few places are really strong. The mounting feet here, I mean, you have like three inches of cast iron here, really strong. Uh, where your ways are, these are almost two inches thick, so these holes are all 1.8 inches deep. 
and you got a 5 8 bolt. I was going to pocket surface these. I don't know if you can see these, but I was going to uh, flatten out each one, but I just decided not to. I don't think it's all that critical. So yeah, a few interesting things on the casting. This side over here is thick enough to run. Uh, we've got M8 bolts, but it was much thinner over here, and I didn't want to pit too big of a hole in here and create stress and have it crack. So we got M6 bolts here, and this isn't really a high stress area, but um, that's just the way it's going to work. And then this row right here is actually kind of be will be an important row. They're uh, M10s, and mainly because these two bolts right here are directly next to the mounting bolts for the uh, column. So I'm assuming this is probably the highest stress area in the whole mill as the column pushes back and forth. It would have been nice, they got this cross support here, it would have been nice if they would have put one here. It's what I would have liked to have seen on these mills. Um, it's kind of interesting, I'll show a picture of the PM940. It, they went with a completely different approach and it has some advantages and some disadvantages. The metal will transfer the flexing forces here to here much better and much stronger and help stop that from flexing as much. Where these, um, you have a longer area of no support. They'll still help. So um, I'm going to put little bolts in here. One thing that I did find that was rather interesting with cast iron, I haven't done a bunch of stuff with cast iron, is these two bolts here are perfectly fine. The holes all tapped out fine, but when I screwed the bolts in to test the holes, there was cast iron powder in them. The powder wraps around the bolt and then causes your clearance to go away and the bolts are stuck. They will not come out. And I might be able to get them out if I break the casting, but I really don't want to break the casting, so they're completely seized in there. So if you're pitting threads into cast iron and you're screwing um, bolts into them, if there's cast iron powder left behind, they can make your bolt, bolts seize up completely. So these two are going to are seized and they're not coming out or going in. I can't get them to turn anymore, which is rather interesting. So I'm going to put one more bolt hole here for the rebar and we're just going to leave it. And we'll just leave these two in there. So I don't know if they'll stay tight or not, but it's just kind of interesting. So um, yeah, that's it. We got a... Uh, on the back here, we're going to have all the rebar pieces, and this will be the main support for basically the whole mill. On the IH, we have two cross members here, and really the weakest part of the IH mill is it flexes in this dimension. The uh, PM940 is, the body is thicker. It's almost an inch and a half thicker in this dimension, and because of the way the angles are running from the ways, it starts from here and runs straight out. You don't have this step. The ways are actually better supported, and so the IH or the 940 is more strong in this dimension, even though it's a little longer, but they don't have the two cross mounts. And they don't have this quite like this, but they have a ridge running all the way down the middle to strengthen up the, uh, the ways. They should have gone full length here, but they didn't. So I do fully plan on um, epoxy graniting the uh, 940. It is a lighter casting. It, comes in at like 110 pounds, if I remember correctly. And this one's 180, it's a, quite a bit of difference. Um, the, the 940 is stronger overall, but because it's lighter, it's more prone to vibration. So the epoxy granite really dampens out the vibration a lot. So uh, it'll probably respond in some ways better. Now I'm not gonna be able to do any of the rebar treatments like this, on the 940 because none of the pieces of metal are actually thick enough to do this to. So it will be a different process um, and we'll show you that more when it's time. It's going to hold a lot of epoxy granite too because the base is just plain bigger. It's longer and it's deeper. It'll probably hold almost twice as much. Um, I am going to do an extra raise the sides up on the 942, but I'll probably only do four inches rather than uh, six like I'm doing on this one. And that'll give it, that'll probably make the 940 weigh like 600 pounds, something like that. But I expect a lot of vibration dampening uh, from that one. The support structure will be different. I got a picture, I'll see if I can put it in the video with this one. So we're going to flip it and then uh, do a quick overview of the top and that's it.
Okay, so we flipped it over. All right, well, we flipped it over once. I pit hot glue on this piece of PVC pipe here. And then on this side, I'm just using construction adhesive. So we got it in there. That actually turned out okay. And we're letting it dry. And so then plugged up a few more holes. That's it for now.